Daylight savings is just around the corner. For most of the United States, the clocks will spring forward on Sunday, March 10th at 2 a.m. Today, we are going to replay my previous episode on the spring time change. My advice hasn't changed, so the only thing you'll need to take note of is the date. So just as a reminder, the clocks will spring forward on Sunday, March 10th. Do you feel like you're still recovering from the fall time change? Well, I have good news. The daylight saving spring time change is easier to navigate than the one in the fall. Today, I'm going to share how you can have your child adjusted to the new time in just one day. And I'm going to answer the very common question about whether you can use this time change to switch to a later bedtime and later morning wake time. Hi, I'm Allison Edgity, a pediatric sleep and wellness coach and a mom of two. I love to help parents find solutions. This is How Long Till Bedtime. I know the time changes give a lot of parents heartburn. But I want to assure you that there is no need to lose sleep over the start and end of daylight savings, particularly for the spring forward change. In the United States, on Sunday, March 13th at 2 a.m., the clock will spring forward. Because it's moving forward, this is the easier of the two time changes. Your child should be waking, quote, later than normal rather than the, quote, earlier waking that happens in the fall. So what should you do? Just like with the fall time change, I recommend doing nothing to prepare in advance. And I recommend having your child back on their typical schedule come Monday morning. First, I want to explain why I don't recommend a gradual shift, and then I'll address what to do if you actually want to use the time change to adjust your baby's sleep schedule. The reason I don't like the idea of adjusting your child's sleep schedule by the 10 to 15 minutes every day leading up to the time change, this is a very popular approach that you'll find online, is because it increases the risk that you throw off their sleep rhythm. Our children's biological sleep rhythms are primarily driven by two things, one, natural light, and two, their daily schedule or the rhythm of their day. This daily schedule piece is big, particularly for children who go to daycare or to school. Our circadian rhythms don't vary by more than about 15 minutes on any given day. That means if you start tweaking before the time change, you're shifting their sleep schedule, but the daily rhythm hasn't changed at all. This could mean that your child's sleep is no longer in alignment with the rhythm of their day, which can result in early morning wakings, short naps, or even skipped naps. If you're looking for minimal disruption, don't do anything in advance, including the Saturday before the time change. I recommend putting everyone to bed at their normal time. Don't change the clocks. Then Sunday morning, you can either let your child wake up at their typical time Or you could proactively wake them 15 to 30 minutes earlier than their normal wake time. So if they typically wake at 6.30 a.m., you could wake them as early as 6 a.m., which is now the new 7 a.m. Or if you want to handle it the way I did when my girls were tiny, I would just let them sleep to their typical wake time, 6.30, which would then be the new 7.30. When you wake up on Sunday, March 13th, switch the clocks to the new time. Then I recommend making a small tweak to your child's typical nap schedule just for Sunday. If you have a baby or child who naps, you'll start their naps 30 minutes later than their typical start time. So for example, if nap times are typically 9 a.m., 12 p.m., and 4 p.m., You'll put your little one down at 9.30 a.m., 12.30 p.m., and 4.30 p.m. 
since these are technically starting earlier than usual, if you look at the rhythm they had the day before, your baby or child may take a little longer to fall asleep. But even if that's the case, I want you to not let them sleep more than 30 minutes past their typical wake time for each nap. So let's say that they would typically wake at 1030 a.m. from their 9 a.m. nap. You'll put them down at 930 a.m. and you'll wake them by 11 a.m. no matter what time they actually fell asleep for that nap. You'll do that for any and all naps on Sunday. And don't forget... If you have a toddler or preschooler who uses a toddler clock or light system to help them know when it's time to get up from a nap or in the morning, remember to shift the wake times for the Sunday nap and the Monday morning waking, and then you'll have to shift them again for Monday naps. Then Sunday night, you'll put your little one to bed 30 minutes later than normal. So for example, if their normal bedtime is 7 p.m., you'll put them down at 7.30 Remember, that's the old 6.30. Come Monday morning, I want you to forge ahead as if the time change never happened. No matter how naps or bedtimes go on Sunday, Monday is back to your normal schedule. Normal wake time, wake your child if necessary, typical nap times, and normal bedtime. Of course, if your child's naps still aren't quite as long as usual on Monday because of this shift in their schedule, you can always put them to bed early. So why does this quick shift usually work best? Because remember, by Monday morning, your household is going to be on their normal schedule. You're going to be going to daycare or work or school at the same time you normally would. Same thing for classes or evening activities. Your child's going to be eating meals at the typical meal times. This means your child's sleep should quickly realign with the rhythm of their day. Now, let's talk about that idea of shifting our early risers to a later schedule. I find that some babies and young children can have their schedule shifted later by about 15 to 30 minutes, but pretty rare that you'd be able to shift them an entire hour. But if you have a child who goes to daycare or school, I really want to help manage your expectations. It's possible this time change will allow them to wake a bit later, if that works with the schedule of you getting up and needing to leave the house. But most babies and children are going to shift back to their typical, most ideal rhythm within about two weeks of the time change. That daytime rhythm ultimately wins out and shifts their circadian rhythm. If, however, you want to try this schedule shift, go for it. I would recommend a goal of shifting that schedule just by 15 to 30 minutes later than normal, not the whole hour. And then if you notice your child's getting less total sleep in a 24-hour period and or you start to see that they're getting overtired, go back to the schedule that was working before the time change. I also want to give a little guidance to my newborn moms out there who have babies not yet on a consistent schedule. I don't want you to think too much about this time change at all. You'll keep focusing on wake windows for naps and just think about shifting your child's bedtime and morning wake window. You could do this by about 15 minutes every couple of days until you get back to your desired bedtime and morning wake. Making sure that you wake your baby in that desired morning wake window and not letting them sleep in too late is the easiest way to shift that bedtime earlier. All right, there you have it. I hope this helps you not worry about this upcoming time change, but I also hope it helps you feel prepared. If you're like me, you love to have a good plan, so just jot down your schedule for Sunday and remember to change those clocks for the toddlers and preschoolers, and if things get funky for a couple days, early bedtime is always your friend. Thanks for joining me, and I hope you'll come back next week. Bye for now. Thank you for listening to How Long Till Bedtime. To learn how we can work together to improve your child's sleep, please visit sleepandwellnesscoach.com.